this morning, we're going to go a step further into our devotional, um, our devotional series for this week uh, titled Disciples of Jesus Christ. Um, this is where we are um, really encouraging you to understand what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be a disciple. And I want us to to look at um, to look at this particular passage um, before I get back to it. I want to tell you about a certain discovery that I found in this. Um, I guess it's best to look at it in order for us to really make that make that point. So let's go back to it. I want you to see what um, what Peter says that's really alarming to me because it brings out a truth that I think that I ignored in times past. And I want to see if you caught this as well. Let's look at it. So we're going back to John. This is the passage that we're in for today. John chapter six and looking at verse 66. Well, first thing first, we find that there are people um, who were with Jesus who didn't stay with Jesus. I think that's the first thing that's in, that's alarming here is that there are people who were with Jesus who just simply didn't stay with Jesus. And so at this time, Jesus says some very challenging things to really sift out those who were following him, because not everybody who were with him believed in him. I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's look at it again. And so he says here from it says from that time, many of the disciples, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Um, then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? This is an important question. Now, the 12 he handpicked, he chose them and he's asking them, do you want to leave like them? And here's what Peter says. Peter says, he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? He said, you have the words of eternal life. Yeah, you have the words of eternal life. He says, also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ. Whoa, the son of the living God. This morning, what I want to focus on today is the conviction of the disciples of Jesus Christ. We've talked so far about the call or the invitation, the covenant or the promise that he that Jesus made to them, uh, the commitment of the disciples. And today I want to talk about the conviction of the disciples. Everybody say the conviction. Yeah, the conviction of the disciples. You see, brothers and sisters, uh, conviction, we often look at it in the sense that I've been I feel bad about something that I've done. And the Holy Spirit does convict us of things that we've done. Um, but conviction also is a belief. It is your belief, your strong belief. Um, you have been convinced of something. And I want you to know that as a disciple of Jesus Christ, um, at some point, it is important that we are convinced. Uh, at some point in our learning of Jesus, there, there should come a time where we become convinced that Jesus is the Christ. Now, this really poses somewhat of a problem here, and I call it a problem, but it's not really a problem. It's a problem when you've thought things or you assume things, like for instance, I assumed that every believer was a disciple and that every disciple was a believer. That was my assumption that every person who says that they're a Christian, that they are automatically um, a their believer and they are also a disciple. And it's one in the same when in all actuality, um, Scripture is proving that I was wrong, that I I had it all twisted, that it's, it's actually possible to be a believer and not be a disciple. And it's also possible to be a disciple and not be a believer. Oh, walk with me for just a second. Remember when Jesus called them, we talked about the invitation or the call of the disciples. Um, we find that Jesus called them, um, but it isn't. It isn't until later on that we find that um, after this call that they've become completely convinced that Jesus is the Christ. 
They've been with him for a little while now. They've been walking with him. They've been living with him. They've been journeying with him. And when they first started following him, I could argue that they didn't automatically believe that he was the Christ. Um, the reason why I could argue that is that is that Peter Peter alludes to this in his words. He says here in verse 69 of John chapter 6, he says, Also, we have come to believe and also know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. When he says we have come to believe and know, that means that it's possible at some point we didn't know and we weren't sure. We might have, might have suspected it, but now we know. And what I'm looking at here, brothers and sisters, are men who have been fully convinced. They have a firm conviction that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the son of the living God. And I'm curious about you. Are you fully convinced? I'm not, not, I'm not here to call you out um, in order to just simply make you feel bad. I, I, I want to, I want to, I, I ask you because um, maybe you were like me. Maybe you assumed that because you went to church that that made you a disciple. Maybe you assumed that because um, you believe, you say that you believed in him, um, that you really do believe. Uh, sometimes what we believe is um, oftentimes what the crowd believes. And if you are stuck with what the crowd believes, you might find yourself in trouble. You see, Jesus, while he had this great crowd that was forming around him, ah, are y'all y'all have y'all able to hear me? Are y'all able to see me? Is everything okay online? I know somebody said they're having connection issues. It looks like it's working okay. All right. What we find is that there's this large crowd forming around Jesus because he's done miracles. For instance, just earlier in chapter six, he fed the 5,000. Now, you know that when Jesus starts um, doing miracles like this, that people start flooding in and there are all types of people that come in when God starts moving in a place. There are those who are spectators. There are those who just want to be seen. There are those who um, who are coming just to see what the next thing is going to be. And or even those who are looking for a reason to, to discount it or to discredit it. Yeah, all of these types of people get attracted when God starts to move. And so Jesus, he could he could discern their hearts. If you look up a couple of verses prior, he can recognize those who are for him and those who are not. And he takes this moment to filter out or to sift through the crowd to identify who's really with him. Because he knows not everybody who's there. Not everybody who says, Lord, uh, really desire him. And here's what we find after Jesus says some hard things to them. He begins to sift out those who really don't believe in him. And we found that many of them, they walked away. Many of them, they left. Many of them, they were with him no more. I want to encourage you to not be discouraged when you find that there are people who leave Jesus. When there are people who walk away from the faith. I'm not saying that it, that it's not painful. It does hurt. But I want you to know this isn't the first time that it's happened and it won't be the last time that it'll happen. Because just because we say that we are disciples doesn't mean that we're believers and I want to encourage you this morning that you would be more than just a disciple, but you would make up in your heart that you believe and that you would even do the work of learning so that you can develop your faith. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. That's one of the reasons why you come here to strengthen your testimony, to strengthen even your faith. And I believe that the Lord is encouraging us this morning to check our conviction. Jesus went on and he asked him, he said, do you also want to go away? I think that this is a good question for every one of us. 
because some of us who have been faithfully attending our churches, you've seen where churches have start, started to dwindle over time, where people have walked away from the faith and walked away from the church and said that they don't believe anymore. And the, the question is for you this morning, do you also want to walk away? You see, and, and here's the response of, the, of Peter. Peter says the most important thing that we ought to know as, the, as followers of Jesus Christ, as students of Christ, Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? I mean, I could just really pause right there. Lord, wh what else are we going to do? You see, when you have fully, when you are fully committed to Jesus like them, they left everything behind. They, they said, they said, we have, we have took the greatest risk in following you. Who else are we going to go to? But not only that, he says here, he says, you have the words of eternal life. You, Jesus, have the words of eternal life. He says, we're not going anywhere. And he says, also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you this morning to check your conviction. I don't say this to scare you. I say this to, to, to alert you because it is quite possible that you could be a disciple of Jesus and not yet a believer that he is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. I want to pray with you this morning because I believe that the Lord it's giving us an opportunity to check the, the authenticity of our faith. And I believe that if there's anyone here, if you have doubts, if you have concerns, the Lord is encouraging you to come before him and bring them to him. Because if you don't deal with those doubts now, as we've been talking about in our Bible study, there's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this away. There's a storm of deception that's coming and it desires to take you out of your faith. You need to be firmly convinced that Jesus is the Christ that he is the son of the living God. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and we bless your name. You are wonderful. You've been so good to us. Father, you've given us a new day with new mercies. And it's only because of your compassion that we were not consumed. So we declare from our hearts today, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Lord, forgive us of all of our sin, all the things that we've done that were not in alignment with who you are. And I'm so grateful that if we confess our sins, that you are, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And from that place, God, we tell you, thank you. Father, this morning, your word has caused us to inspect our faith, to check our conviction level. Father, there are many who were disciples that started or went with you at some point and they walked away. Lord, there are countless people in this, in this day and age that are walking away from the church that are walking away from their faith and father i i don't know that all of us were fully convinced father as we search your word as we remain diligent students of your word we're asking holy ghost that you would reveal jesus to us so that we would not just believe but as peter said that we would know, hallelujah, that we would know Jesus, 
that we would know that he is the Christ, that we would know that he is the son of the living God. Paul said, I count all other things lost uh, for the sake of knowing him. Yeah, and it's my desire to know him and the power of his resurrection. God, we desire to grow in the precise and correct knowledge of Jesus Christ and Lord of you so that we can be firmly planted and rooted and your love. As we close out this prayer, we pray the way that your son taught us and we say our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. But yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. We're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. Take a moment to reflect on today's devotional. Check your conviction. Are you fully convinced that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the son of the living God? If you are, there's no storm that'll ever be able to move you. I love you. God bless you. Take care.